morning again. And I'm Mark Van Kirkhoff. I'm Director of Development and Community Services for Kane County. One of the hats I wear is economic development. Uh, last evening, I had uh, the privilege to be able to have dinner with Michael Burke, our, our next speaker. Um, as Chairman Lawson mentioned, he does come uh, to travel to join us today from Kansas City, which we greatly appreciate. Um, but you are really going to enjoy what he has to say. It was fascinating to hear uh, what they've accomplished and how they accomplished it in Kansas City. A couple uh, facts about Michael. Uh, he has been, uh, is active in the rapidly development, developing Kansas City technology community. He was appointed as co-chair of the mayor's bi-state innovation team, a task force charged with developing strategies for the use of the new fiber technology in Kansas City. He also serves as co-chair of the Advisory Council for KC Digital Drive, a program to implement strategies for the growth of Kansas City as a leading technology center. Mr. Burke chaired the Launch KC Initiative, a program of the Kansas City Economic Development Corporation to assist small and medium-sized tech companies. He is a member of the Missouri IT Council and on the advisory committee to the Digital Sandbox, a proof of concept center started with the leadership of the University of Missouri, Kansas City. And not surprising after all of that, uh, Government Technology Magazine named Mr. Burke as one of the top 25 doers, dreamers, and drivers for 2014. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Michael Burke. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, the, it, it is a great pleasure. Thank you, Chairman Lousen. I appreciate the kind introduction, uh, especially the intelligent part. I've nev never been introduced that way. Um, uh, I'm going, uh, first of all, I, I appreciate the invitation to your beautiful county. I got a chance to see a little bit of it yesterday and this morning, and a river does run through it, and it's a beautiful, beautiful river. Our river in Kansas City is a little more raucous than the Missouri River. We don't just take a canoe out in it and, and uh, paddle around. Uh, but it's a beautiful county, and I can tell talking to people this morning how proud you are of your area and, and uh, what a sense of identity that you have developed for Kane County. Uh, all the more important for what you're about to embark on. Uh, the... Uh, because what I'm going to talk about is not about physical infrastructure, it's a lot more about human infrastructure. As many of you know, in 2010, Google made an announcement that they were going to select one city uh, to put a gigabit of fiber to the entire city, fiber to the home. And uh, it, it sparked a huge uh, competition 1,100 cities across the country filed applications. The application itself was relatively simple. So to enhance their chances of winning, many cities did some very interesting things. Uh, Topeka, Kansas changed its name to Google. Uh, uh, the mayor of Duluth uh, jumped in Lake Superior. And uh, one city rented a plane and flew a banner across uh, Mountain View, the Google headquarters, saying, pick us. Uh, and in some cities, they had parades and turned out a, a, a thousand people with glow sticks spelling out Google. So it, it was an interesting competition. Uh, and, uh, and, and then in, uh, in 2011, first uh, March 30th uh, for Kansas City, Kansas, and then in May, for uh, uh, Kansas City, Missouri, Google announced, we're going to build your fiber network. And that was a huge, uh, huge announcement for our city. And, and I often say what Google did for our area had little to do with fiber. It, it was the energy that consumed our community um, uh, immediately about, gee, we're going to have, you know, a thousand times faster um, uh, access to the Internet. Uh, and then the next question was, what does that mean? Uh, how do I use it? How much is it going to cost? Where is it going to go? 
uh, what, what do I do with it? How does it uh, impact business? How does it impact my life? How does it impact the schools and healthcare? Um, and, and those are all hugely important questions. Um, most of the cities around the country are, are still, as you are, focusing on how do I get that in the ground? How, how do I get the fiber network? We, we had a rare privilege in Kansas City of having that done for us. But then we had to figure out what it means. Um, we were fortunate that we had a pretty solid um, tech community in Kansas City, thanks to some of the uh, companies headquartered there, uh, Sprint Corporations headquartered there, uh, Garmin, which makes the, 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 the maps, GPS systems. Um, and uh, especially thanks to, to Sprint layoffs as they up, up, upsized and downsized. We had a lot of entrepreneurs that were tech savvy in the community. What we didn't have was the kind of cohesiveness uh, of our tech community. And that was one of the most immediate impacts of, uh, uh, of the Google announcement. As, as all of a sudden we found ways to get our tech community together interacting with each other, coming up with ideas. And, and that, was, uh, that, that was one of the immediate impacts, and that's so important. I'll get to that, some of the spin-offs from that effort later. Um, the question then was, how do we as a community take advantage of high-speed fiber? And um, the two mayors, mayor of Kansas City, Kansas, and mayor of Kansas City, Missouri, who is the one that I ran <laughs> Uh, with, we, we were both good friends and, and we both agreed whoever won got to be mayor and, and uh, whoever didn't got to, got to volunteer for all these task forces. And I, came out, I came out ahead on that one. I get to go home at night. Um, so the, the two mayors got together, which is unusual with a state line running through our cities, but, uh, and they said, Let, let's, let's appoint a group to figure out what it means. So they appointed six from Missouri, six from Kansas. I was the Missouri chair. Uh, it was an interesting group of people, uh, some with tech backgrounds, some just uh, as I had more public policy backgrounds. So um, it, 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 was, uh, it, it was an interesting group to work with to begin with. Uh, and then we, we, um, we were charged with writing what we call a playbook or uh, a strategy for our communities uh, on making Kansas City a gigabit city. The only problem was we, we looked around and there were no templates of other cities across the country in terms of you know, how, how do you do a gigabit city plan. Uh, we ended up, and, and this was absolutely fascinating, but fairly early on we had tele, telepresence conferences with Barcelona, Amsterdam, Moscow, Toronto, and Singapore. And those are all areas that have their plans, most of them government financed. Uh, but we, we learned a lot. Um, most importantly, uh, they reaffirmed that we were headed in the right direction and, and helped point us in the right direction. That, that, was, that was very important for us. So uh, we, we spent the better part of a year listening, listening to the community, listening to experts, going to meet with uh, educators, going to meet with hospitals um, and um, government officials. Uh, one of the advantages we had is everybody wanted to know about Google Fiber and what, what it's going to cost and, and uh, when's it going to be installed, what's the timetable, and who's going to get it. Google told us none of that. Google is very tight-lipped. <laughs> They're a very tight-lipped company. So we operated in a vacuum as far as that provider. We did have you know, a lot of input from the incumbent you know, providers, uh, uh, Time Warner, Comca Comcast, and others. Um, but uh, Google was very nice. They said, we'll tell you when we've got it figured out. And, and that, that was true. I always say about Google, my, my, and I, I've studied a lot of the history of their company, and I thought, these are smart people, and they know what they're doing. Now, I changed that to, these are smart people, and they're making it up as they go along. <laughs> uh, but just a few stories about listening. 
Um, one of the main thrusts, my co-chair on this, was a retired school superintendent. And he, of course, was very interested in ed education. And um, so we met with the universities. Uh, we met with the uh, K through 12 schools. Uh, we learned a lot. We learned that common complaint from the universities was how they can, how long it takes to adjust their curriculum uh, in a fast-paced, fast-changing <coughs> era. Um, and then um, we have a lot of school districts. Just within Kansas City, Missouri itself, we have parts of 14 school districts. Uh, that presents a problem. We'll talk a little bit about silos. Um, but I'd say some of the superintendents we talked to got it. Some didn't. Uh, we ended up talking to a lot of tech people and, and, and teachers within the school districts. And, and we found out that there were silos not only among the school districts, but silos within the school districts. That the tech people, the administrators, and the teachers didn't necessarily commute effect, uh, communicate effectively. <coughs> one one uh, administrator told us about ordering 600 pads, uh, uh, notepads, and then finding out they're not compatible with, with the school system. Uh, teachers complained, and this is a valid complaint, that they, they, they dumped these new pads in their classrooms and never taught them how to use, use them to teach because it's a different teaching method. We were gradually uh, adjusting to the new reality there. But one day my um, cohort, a retired school superintendent, said, Mike, do you think we ought to talk to some pre-K teachers? And I thought, I'm not sure that's important, but go ahead and set it up. That was probably the most important takeaway that I took from the whole education issue. And, and that is, we have a tsunami of three and four and five-year-olds hitting our school system that are the first generation, totally digital age kids. And the minute you tell them, leave your devices at home, you've, you've made a mistake. And, and we have to adjust quickly <clears throat> in our education system um, to teach the teachers. To, I mean, I had teachers telling me, you know, I don't know how to use it, but my, my third grade uh, class told me how to do it. And uh, I, you talk to grandparents who know nothing about iPads, and their four-year-olds are, are teaching them how to use it. So uh, that first generation of the digital age is something we need to track very closely and we need to understand. Uh, one of the other groups that we listen to were millennials, and uh, uh, that, that was most enjoyable. Uh, millennials are different than baby boomers. They think differently, their priorities are different. Uh, they're not neither good nor bad, but they're different. And uh, I'll tell you about <coughs> one, one very important occurrence in Kansas City. Uh, <coughs> and that was something that developed organically. And it was called Kansas City Startup Village. And uh, Google, as they rolled out, they, they did what they called fiber hoods. And it was a competitive system of which neighborhood signed up their quota to be the first to get the Google fiber. Well, the one that got chosen first, there was a guy who took his 401k, drained it, and bought a house. And he invited hackers into the house to live there free of charge for a period of time, to work together to develop apps and work on their startups. And then, lo and behold, somebody else bought a house, did the same thing. And then another house, and then another house. And we had an investor from Colorado that uh, wrote the book on startup communities, and he bought a house. So we developed a whole community of seven or eight houses um, of young people uh, working together to develop apps. Now, from a baby boomer point of view, it didn't make any sense. The, the business plan didn't make any sense. But what was so important was this, <laughs> to me, was, was this was a great um, 
look into the functioning of millennial communities. And that is so important. And one of the things I would urge this morning, uh, because I, I see a few more uh, non-millennials <laughs> Uh, than, than young people here. You've got to understand that generation. That generation is going to influence housing, they're going to influence office space, they're going to influence co uh, consumerism. Uh, they're certainly going to uh, uh, impact the tech community. Uh, and we already see it with disruptive services like, like Uber and, and, and other services. It's, it's disruptive. So understanding that community. I always tell the millennials I talk to, in Kansas City, we have become a young person's town, and uh, which, which is different than it had been for a lot of reasons. I say, this is, in my 40 plus years of professional life in Kansas City, it's the best time to be a young person, and I'm glad I am. <laughs> okay, so after, um, after a year uh, of work uh, among our group in public meetings and public hearings and lots of, lots of talking, uh, we put out what we call the playbook. And, and there's a link there, kcdigitaldrive.org slash playbook, um, if you want to look it up. But that, that was the original 2012 uh, strategic plan for our community. And um, I, I want to impart what I think is the one mantra that we put uh, in the introduction to the playbook. That creating a successful internet economy is 10% technology and 90% sociology. And I'm, over the years I might have changed that maybe 95% sociology because it, you know, we, I mentioned like in the school districts, the silos, breaking down those silos. Same in healthcare, same in, in economic development. Uh, and we, we looked, uh, took a hard look at education, digital inclusion, uh, which is especially important in a city like Kansas City, where we have a, a lot of people with no computer at home, uh, no access to the internet. Um, the school superintendent tells the story, they gave pads to their high school students. And he gets a call early one morning from security at the high school. He says, uh, we've got a bunch of students milling around outside the high school. I'm not sure why. They were there because of the Wi-Fi. <laughs> they didn't have it at home. They didn't have connectivity. And I spoke to a lot of, a lot of school kids uh, from different parts of town that did not have that kind of connectivity at home. And that's, that's absolutely crucial to work on digital inclusion. Uh, and we've developed a number of programs I'll, I'll, I'll talk about. Uh, education I've talked about, again, it's, 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 uh, it's a wave of young people and we need to ride that wave. Uh, economic development is most interesting because that's my background. I was a, have been a development attorney for 43 years and uh, worked with all the tools, uh, which are great tools, but I now call them 20th century tools not 21st century tools. Uh, and I worked a lot with our Economic Development Corporation. I picked up the phone one day, called my friend down there and said, hey, I'm Joe from Cincinnati, he knew I was. And I said, uh, I got a couple of guys and we're, we're working on some apps. We're intrigued what's happening in Kansas City. We'd like to come there, what can you do for us? And there was silence on the other end of the phone because we had no economic development program geared to startups, geared to millennials, uh, uh, geared to the needs uh, of a new tech community. And uh, we, we said, we, we need to remedy that. And I'll talk about Launch KC, which was, was our answer. Uh, in the arena of government, uh, Kansas City um, was awakening and has awakened uh, on the government side to what needs to be done to be um, a, a digital city and I'll talk a little bit more about some of the recommendations. Entrepreneurial innovation, we didn't, we had a lot of good uh, unconnected entrepreneurial groups, but we found we needed to connect them not only uh, in, in work setting, but also socially, because some of the best ideas come from the social interaction 
uh, of young entrepreneurs. Then healthcare um, was another area we, t we took a look at. We had some hospital uh, people on our board uh, and um, ran into some interesting issues. One, I discovered how proprietary hospitals were with their information and the thought of sharing among hospitals is, well, it was a little bit of a hurdle. The other was um, um, we have two medical schools in Kansas City, University of Missouri and University of Kansas, both excellent facilities. University of Kansas um, is top cancer research center. So you can get on the internet and, and go out to Dodge City and help diagnose a, a cancer patient in Dodge City, Kansas, if you're working in Kansas City, Kansas uh, at the university. You can't go across the street to Missouri and do the same thing. The, the reason being is, is doctors are licensed by state and I think at some point we're going to have to overcome that. Uh, a lot of states, especially where they have uh, lack of medical care in rural areas, uh, that's a huge uh, boon and opportunity. State of Texas has a wonderful medical network where they can consult uh, with uh, uh, specialists uh, uh, from Dallas or, or Austin or Houston across the whole state of Texas, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, so we published our presentation, um, and um, I want to see if I can explain this chart, which I try and understand myself uh, sometimes. But the important thing is a digital community is not just one that has high-speed fiber. It's one that brings together the resources, the organizations, educates its, its people, uh, has, of course, the infra infrastructure, but also measures and, and also continuously refines uh, what its strategies are. And we, uh, you know, what we published in, in 2012, we've, we've, uh, we've kept refining. We've kept adding to, we've kept tweeting. We found out some of the assumptions uh, we, we had were not self-executing. So we, we had to take steps to execute uh, those, uh, those issues. Uh, here's what has happened since. All of these programs listed here did not exist when we published uh, our playbook. They were direct or indirect outgrowths of the playbook. Let me go through them one by one. KC Digital Drive, um, we realized we didn't want playbook to sit on a shelf, that we needed an organization whose goal was to help implement and help communicate not only to our community but to other communities ac across the country what it means to be a gigabit city. We just had last week uh, 300 people attend uh, what we call the Gigabit City Summit. And they are communities like yours that want to know what we did, what worked, what didn't work. They want to share what they are doing in their communities. And, and, and I'll stress, every community is different. There is no one size fits all uh, because Kansas City certainly differs uh, from Kane County um, and you know in terms of some of the demographics and, and makeup and size so uh, there's no one size fits all but you need to, to do a plan that fits your uh, community one of the issues we uh, struggled with was the digital divide the haves and the have-nots because what you do not want in your community is to have part of the community that has the fastest uh, internet in the country and the other half of the, your community that's not even connected that, that can't even uh, fill out a, a uh, uh, job application uh, or a medical application online and so that that is uh, a continuing and an ongoing effort now we were helped by google and others they established what they called the the digital inclusion fund which is run through our community foundation. Uh, and we have uh, literally dozens of applicants lined up for those programs. And they're church groups, they're, they're schools, they're not-for-profits. They all have to be not-for-profits. 
uh, public library. Um, and uh, we created this million plus dollar fund and we do grants every year um, to uh, education programs where groups are going out and teaching people how to use the internet, to help, helping them get connected. Uh, one, one of the uh, really great models is a group called Connecting for Good. It's a not-for-profit, uh, wasn't even formed at the time we started. Uh, but they uh, have connected through Wi-Fi uh, public housing projects, low-income apartment projects, uh, tremendous results. They also have established teaching uh, for beginners on how to use a computer. They take old computers and, and repurpose them, uh, and it's, it's a great program. And, and you cannot afford in your community anywhere across the country to have the haves and the have-nots in terms of digital literacy. So we, we have some robust programs to address that. I mentioned the economic development strategy. You need 21st century tools. Uh, startups, uh, offering them, offering a startup a TIF or a tax abatement doesn't quite hack it. They're, they're not into real estate, they're not into tax abatement. What they need uh, are grants, they need seed money. In, in later stages, they need uh, investor money. Um, they need mentors. They need free office space. Um, they, they need to be introduced to the robust corporate community and have access to that corporate community. And, and we listen. We listen to these young startups. And, and I think that's, that's uh, five minutes. Okay. And, and we, we, we listen very well. And, um, and we uh, launch KC was one of those programs that helped start, um, and it's uh, through our economic development agency and other uh, not for profits. And we now uh, this will be our second year taking applications for five hundred thousand dollars in grants, ten fifty thousand dollar grants plus free office space in Kansas City plus mentoring plus working with the, with the corporate community. We had 500 applicants our first year from all over the country and many all over the world. Now, now the one requirement was you got to move to Kansas City, move your business to Kansas City. But in less than a year, one, one of our 10 got bought up and taken to Silicon Valley. So uh, it, it, we consider it a, a great success and we just started taking applications. Uh, I did not volunteer for the review committee because that's an arduous uh, task, but it's, it's, it's one that's uh, really very exciting. Uh, we found out we had a lot of, of people either tinkering in their homes or, or in spare time at work uh, with their idea for a startup, but they didn't quite know where to go. So we created, uh, with the University of Missouri, Kansas City, what's called the Digital S Sandbox. Um, we, we just in time made the deadline for an application for a million dollar grant from the U.S. Department of Commerce. We won the grant. And um, this is for early stage startups. And we have counseled in the last two and a half years uh, 300 uh, people interested in startups. Um, out of that 300, um, we have 23 corporations and companies that have been formed. And um, no, more than that, we have, we have uh, 30. We have uh, uh, 23 million in follow-on funding from the private sector and, and others, and uh, 250 new jobs in, in Kansas City. So that's been a very successful program. One million cups, uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of the Kauffman Foundation. Kauffman Foundation is a multi-billion dollar foundation founded by the late Muriel Kaufman, who, who uh, uh, was in the pharmaceutical business. And its, its sole purpose is to encourage entrepreneurs. And they started a program in Kansas City. It's now been ex expanded to uh, several dozen other cities called One Million Cups. But this is the social aspect that I talked about, of how do you get entrepreneurs, business people, um, uh, lawyers, finance people, uh, people just thinking about it, tinkerers, 
uh, in one place uh, at one time to interact with each other. So one million cups, and it's patterned off a million cups of coffee, of, of how you sit around drinking coffee brainstorming. Every Wednesday morning, they have up to 300 people show up to hear two entrepreneurs explain their ideas. Uh, it's a fascinating study. It's been replicated in other cities, not really to the same level of success. I think Chicago has it, but uh, it, it's, it's a fascinating uh, look into uh, the functioning of an entrepreneurial system. The city established an office of innovation for the government sector. We just got through submitting a week ago uh, an application for a $50 million federal transportation grant for smart cities. But we're, we just opened two weeks ago a new streetcar system in our downtown, and it's all Wi-Fi and it's all interconnected. And we have great, uh, uh, great opportunity. Casey Startup Village. Um, uh, I've mentioned that that's, that's the group of houses where, where the hackers hang out. Fascinating to watch. They had to appoint somebody full time to handle tours. At last count, they had representatives from 45 different countries tour Kansas City Startup Village. We had tours from the European Union, we had foreign press tours, we had diplomatic tours. Um, a lot of interest in, in what's happening in Kansas City. And finally, KC Rising. KC Rising is, is it, it took a little while for the more staid portion of the business community, I'm away from home so I can study that, to catch on that they, they need to uh, play a role in funding startups. And their, their commitment is $25 million of, of seed money for, for startups for Kansas City. So those are the types of things, when you talk about building a gigabit city, Th those are the types of things that need to happen in addition to just having the, the fiber. Now, I, wa I want to brag a little bit about our city. Um, you know, Kansas City, you wouldn't recognize it from 10 years ago. We've, we've done a lot of things. We, we've got some great leadership. We've redone our downtown. Uh, we're, we're building new hotels uh, and a new streetcar system. Um, what I didn't touch uh, was another role I played, which is in the arts community. We, we actually built a new $250 million uh, performing arts center. I managed to sneak a picture of the Kaufman Center for the Performing Arts, which is uh, both uh, uh, an 1800-seat uh, uh, seat for ballet and opera, and, uh, and uh, 1,600 seat for, uh, for the symphony. Beautiful, beautiful facility. And that, that's really part of the strategy too because I, I think the, the goal of Kane County and any city across the country is to respond what I think is one of the great challenges of our time, which is to grow, educate, keep, steal talent. We are in a worldwide competition for talent. And with the amenities you have in Kane County, I think that's a major part of your strategy. How do we keep the talent here that we have? How do we train new talent? How do we siphon out of other places, like Chicago, and, and, and talk about the quality of life and the style of life and the cost of living and make Kane County the, the desirable place? We've, we've accomplished that in many respects in Kansas City. And I don't put a whole lot of stock in, in the national rankings uh, that magazines put out. But compared to 10 years ago, all of a sudden, Kansas City is, is, is getting a lot of, of accolades. Um, the, the bottom one is actually kind of the coolest city award. And I, I take credit for that. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's nice to have people saying uh, great things. We still have a lot of work to do. Um, we need more funding for startups. You know, I think we're, we're pretty good in, in, you know, it's usually it's three tiers. It's the, the initial tier, and, and then you get to the point you actually have a product and customers, and you need to hire people and bring in equipment, and that's second tier, and that's in the millions usually. And then you really take off exponentially, and that's the third tier financing. And a lot of that third-tier financing, you have to go to Silicon Valley. 
And what happens then, we've experienced it with some of our successes, they can get their money in Silicon Valley, but that comes at a price they have to move out there. Or they get bought out and, and move out there. So we, we want to provide more third, third tier funding. Um, we've had mixed results in our legislatures in Missouri and Kansas. Um, Kansas had a, a very good uh, uh, angel investor tax credit program, it was very successful, had good results. We tried to duplicate that in Missouri. Uh, the Speaker of the House made it his bill, passed the House like 200 to 9, got killed in the Senate three, year, three years in a row. And, and it didn't have to do with that tax credit, it had to do with the historic tax credits, long story. Um, but the state of Missouri has anted up for like our launch KC grants, uh, half a million a year. So that, that, that's been very successful. We need continuous evaluation and you do not stand on, on your laurels. You don't pat yourself on the back and say, we've done it, we've accomplished it. No, it's, there are always challenges to do. Um, I hope to have time maybe later to answer questions. Um, be glad. I'll stick around and if anybody has any questions, we'd love to talk about what we've done and, and what we have left to do and I think it's very exciting where Kane County is right now. It's an exciting time. You should be excited about this fiber coming into your town, into your county because it's going to open doors that you didn't realize you had to open. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, a great success story for the county and I, I wish you great luck. Thank you. Thank you.